from the University of Kansas Health System. I am amazed. The team here is great. I came on a Tuesday and then by Saturday I had a heart in me. I have never seen a group of people work together so good as this team of heart specialists. I mean, it's just unreal. Stand by to set up show. And the Dolph C. Simons Three, Jr. Family two, Broadcast one. Studio. Roll it. Always makes you feel like you're the most important patient on the planet. I felt heard and that was really big. This is All Things Heart. January 9th, I'm Alexis Del Cid, and welcome back to an all new All Things Heart. You will find us here every Thursday at 10 a.m. giving you direct access to our doctors so you can ask your heart-related questions. Here's what we're talking about today. If you could script who miraculously would accidentally show up on the night you had cardiac arrest unexpectedly, you couldn't have drawn it up any better. Talk about luck when the odds were stacked against him. Nine out of 10 people who have a cardiac arrest outside of the hospital, according to the CDC, don't survive. Wait till you hear the wild lineup of people who just happened to be there when this man collapsed. And by the way, would you know what to do if there was a medical emergency and someone needed CPR? If not, you'll likely be inspired to change that after watching this program. We love answering all of your questions. Be sure to send them to us on YouTube, Facebook, and to the All Things Heart email. You can find all the links right here on your screen. Okay, now let's get to a man named John Cook. The 52-year-old who happens to be the CEO of a global advertising agency works out every single day. He's incredibly fit. His cholesterol is nice and low. He keeps up with all his doctor's visits which is what makes what happened to him a few months ago all the more surprising. And when you learn who just happened to be there, it's downright jaw-dropping. Right over here is, is where it happened. It will never be lost on John Cook how lucky he was that evening he collapsed on this very spot along Mission Road in Fairway, Kansas. The last thing I remember is going down to one knee, grabbing onto a political sign right over there. I don't know who the politician was. It was after 7 p.m. and John, whose whole family was out of town, had decided to go for an evening jog instead of hitting the treadmill at home. A decision doctors now say was the difference between life and death. He's a one lucky guy for sure. Right when I woke up, I could hear the ambulance sirens coming. And then it's that weird moment where he goes, I think those are for me. When he came to on the sidewalk, he was so confused, looking up at 10 faces circled above him. I thought I was in a movie, and I realized I'm in the middle of this movie, <laughs> that I have no idea what my role is in this movie. Then I figure out, I think I'm the subject of this movie. Then one of them spoke. Her first comment to me was, you and I have been making out for two and a half minutes. <laughs> so. She was one of two bystanders who'd been doing CPR. John sat up and saw a man beside her, but weirdly, he was in scrubs. Well, I didn't know if that was a dream that he was in doctor stuff or that he actually was a doctor. He was the real deal. The University of Kansas Health System cardiac fellow, Dr. Prakash Acharya. I actually had my scrubs on, and uh, in the cath lab, we have this uh, head cover. I don't think I had taken off the head cover. It turns out Dr. Acharya saw John collapse while he was driving down the road that he seldom traveled at that time of day. My brother-in-law came from San Diego. I thought I'll go home, I'll have dinner with him, and I'll come back and do my paperwork. The cardiologist then joined two women who also happened to be nearby, who also happened to be skilled in CPR, and then more people pulled over. Two of them were not your average Good Samaritans. It didn't take me long to figure out how lucky I was. They were cardiac anesthesiologists, also with the University of Kansas Health System. We know that from the data that by, uh, if you have a cardiac arrest outside the hospital, the outcomes are very poor. But not under circumstances like these, surrounded by heart specialists and people trained in CPR. If you could script who miraculously would accidentally show up on the night you had cardiac arrest unexpectedly, you couldn't have drawn it up any better. Are you uh, ever going to deviate from the sun? No, this is, this is where I'll jog for the rest of my life. We are so happy to have John Cook on our program this morning. Great to see you, John. And we are also thrilled to have the Interventional Cardiology Fellow that you just saw, Dr. Prakash Acharya, in studio with us. And we are also joined by cardiologist and electrophysiologist, Dr. Rhea Pimentel. Dr. Pimentel, you treated John once he arrived here at the health system. But first, I wanna just get to John right off the bat. How are you feeling today? And what's it like to watch the whole story about you now that you've come through all of that? <laughs> well, good to see everybody. Um, first of all, I haven't seen some of you since since it happened. Uh, but no, I'm, I was doing great until I saw that feature. 
and I was starting to tear up a little bit, honestly, um, watching that. Um, seeing it's a, it's a little surreal, but I know overall I'm doing great. Uh, had a had an appointment a couple of weeks ago. My wife Lisa and I went in to see uh, Dr. Pimentel, and um, not knowing what to expect, it was kind of my 90 day check in on a lot of things, and honestly, it was fantastic. Uh, validated what I was feeling, which was really good. And I don't know if uh, Dr. Pimentel will remember, but. Um, it's been a famous quote now in my family because I shared it out afterwards where she said, hey, you're doing great. Uh, go live your life, young man. And I think she's wrong about the young man part, but I'm hoping she's <laughs> right about the go live your life part because I really took it to heart. I've got, I've got a really busy life. I guess everybody does, but I've, I've just dove right back into a very busy life and uh, my energy is fantastic. And that's the, the goal is that people can go back and live their lives. and. You, he made his day by calling him a young man. Yeah. <laughs> Do you that's what I'm here for. I mean, that's incredible <laughs> that. Confidence after, boost. <laughs> that's so great. Um, Dr. Acharya, you usually don't take that route home uh -huh. at that time, yeah. ever. What do you remember about that moment? You're driving by and you just see this guy collapse? Yeah, so I was riding pretty slow because the speed limit is pretty low. Uh, it's about 25. And uh, there was a little traffic, so it was pretty slow uh, driving in. And I see this uh, man who is uh, getting to the uh, pavement. Uh, I mean, he's trying to fall. Then I see this lady who is by his side with the dog, who's trying to get him down to the pavement. And uh, then I just pass them. And I reach, uh, uh, I thought, okay, I should uh, stop my car and uh, yeah. get to them. So I just uh, drove into somebody else's driveway and uh, rushed to them. I could see there were two uh, ladies who were actually performing uh, good quality CPR. Which was really remarkable for you to witness. That's right, that's right. Um, we'll get to more of that in a sure. moment, but it was like a movie. So you're sprinting in your scrubs with your head thing on. That's right, that's right. Running to this guy, who um, we know is now John. Uh, Dr. Pimentel, you treated John here at the health system. What was his official diagnosis? That's a really good question. I think the official diagnosis is cardiac arrest, secondary to left heart dysfunction and atrial arrhythmias. Okay. So in the layman's term, he just didn't get enough blood flow to his head because his heart rate was going so fast, causing this arrest to occur and passing out. How do you treat that? So he was a little bit of a conundrum when he came in because um, as you mentioned before, he's very fit, very right. active, really had not a lot of symptoms of beforehand up until probably the maybe the last couple weeks and so we did a bunch of testing um, and the only thing we could find out was that his heart rate was going fast and he was in a specific rhythm called atrial flutter okay. which atrial flutter is typically not a dangerous rhythm but any rhythm that goes fast enough and in his case could go up to 300 beats a minute can cause a problem and wow. that's what we settled on as his um, cause of his arrest so to speak so dr pimentel said that john you, not until the few few weeks prior, did you have any symptoms? Looking back, do you now recognize, oh, that, those were symptoms? Like, w what was going on just a couple weeks before this happened? Yeah, well, first of all, the, in the weird, many series of strange things and miracles that happened, I, I, I had worn an Apple Watch for years, and it, it had broken, the face had broken about three weeks before, which is that time period that Dr. Pimotel was just talking about. So. That was, that was really strange. <laughs> Maybe that should have been assigned to me, but I didn't have much um, warning, but the Sunday before I was on a jog and I remember feeling weak at a point in the jog that I wouldn't have normally felt weak. I was actually out of town running in a great mood and I was like, this is, this is a little weird. And I kind of slowed down, put my hands on my knees. It was nothing like the, the Thursday night that this happened, but it was, it wasn't enough to make me go to the doctor or do much. It was just that I felt like it was probably because I was tired from, from work that day or something. Uh, it was a little bit of a sign. Um, right. And uh, that, that, you know, that, but not again, not enough to, to, to make you do something about it. We have some images we want to show our viewers and share with you. They're images from John's ECG. Um, Dr. Pimentel, I want you to walk us through what we're seeing. And also, what's an ECG compared to an EKG? 
It's actually the same thing. It just depends if you're German or not. So oh. the K is cardiogram in German versus uh -huh. C for cardiogram in English. So it, it, we use them interchangeably. But you say ECG usually. I usually say ECG, but right. every once in a while I'll make okay. it up. Okay, well that makes sense. I was expecting something more complicated than no, that. No, I, I wish there was something more exciting. No, but. this is great. This is exciting enough. Trust me, this whole episode. So what are we looking at here? So this is John's 12 lead EKG. So it, it sort of shows what his heart rhythm is doing. and, and and it, it's a little bit difficult to appreciate. I, I can't see it very, very well from here. But it, he has, it's a little faster than it should be for an otherwise healthy man, young man, of course. Um, and then on top of it, <laughs> Thank you. he has, you're welcome, he has uh, <laughs> these atrial signals that look like atrial flutter. So definitely okay. abnormal. And at the, at the rate that that's in, maybe he wouldn't feel it. But if he was exerting himself, running or lifting something heavy, um, I could see that that rate would accelerate quite quickly to up to 300 beats a minute. So if his his uh, eye watch, his Apple watch hadn't cracked, he might have before. seen it. Oh, man. Yep. Yeah. He, it probably would have given him a good clue that something was, was amiss. Yes. So smart watches, we're hearing more and more are life-saving indicators. But they're definitely helpful for us. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you get that eye watch fixed, John? <laughs> I got like I treated myself to a good one. I ordered Did it. Did you uh, order it in the hospital? <laughs> from the John? hospital. Yeah. From the hospital a couple days after. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You know, there were at least three doctors, all from the cardiology department here at the health system, who just happened to be driving by separately, three separate cars when this happened, and you collapsed. It's nothing short of remarkable. It's like a made-for-TV movie. Um, the doctors, though, also credit two bystanders who performed CPR with saving your life. And Dr. Acharya, uh, you're, you were one of the first people to say, you know, knowing CPR is critical. The American Heart Association finds if performed correctly and immediately, CPR can double or even triple your chance of survival in a cardiac arrest outside the hospital. Now the key phrase is if it's performed correctly. How rare is it for bystanders to perform CPR correctly? It is actually pretty rare for people to know what they're doing and uh, do it timely and correctly. Even people who are CPR trained, they tend to do it. Uh, What's no. the mistake we're making? So I, f I would say that uh, the general public isn't aware about CPR skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, if even if you are trained and you've not been updating your uh, skills by with uh, recent trainings, then you might not be performing it correctly. And Dr. Pimentel, you're, you're nodding your head yes. There's a lot of that. adrenaline yeah. that occurs during these um, episodes. So even if you know how to do CPR, if you're not doing it regularly, a lot of times you could make mistakes just in the heat of the moment. Would regularly mean like every year you get recertified or you know, what? We as healthcare professionals are recertified for both basic life support as well as advanced cardiac life support every two years. So I think that would be a good marker for people to kind of freshen up their CPR skills. I want to ask John, when we hear that statistic that only one out of 10 people who have a cardiac arrest outside the hospital survive, first of all, I didn't know it was that low. Um, second of all, you're the one in 10. Do you and your wife and your family talk about that regularly or do you try to put it out of your mind? How do you, how do you process what happened? Yeah, well, well, first of all, back on the CPR conversation, um, the idea of performing it correctly, which I agree <clears throat> uh, with what they're saying, I think there's also the idea of just performing it at all because I just, I'm so thankful that those, those people, the bystanders you mentioned, not only did they do it correctly, as Dr. Acharya said, they, just to do it, because I can imagine if you just see something, well, all the training that you have, but then to actually jump into action before you even do it right or not right, I just think the act of doing it, if you saw somebody on the road as fast as it was done, that's, I'm so, Appreciate that. Um, but back to the one in 10, it didn't hit me for uh, several days into the hospital, but then going through different tests and things that weekend um, starts to hit you that when, when you're down in the uh, anesthesia, unit, anesthesia unit and somebody says, we've heard about your, your case, it's a miracle. Or, wow. or you're one in, your amazing statistic, it started to really set in. Um, a good friend of mine from work had a, um, after, after this happened, um, surprised me by having our entire leadership team do a series of CPR trainings and certifications here at, here at our office. And I came, came to one of them and um, the, the instructor that was doing it, um, they had me share my story. And it really set in when he started to go through the statistics you were just talking about. I said, you are lucky to be here. <laughs> and you know, I said, yeah, yeah. He said, no, you don't understand. 
and I and I did I did appreciate that, and I I know there's luck to it, but I'm you know after going through it all and seeing how um, both these doctors and many others work, it's it's lucky, but there's there's so much involved in, in having that good luck of the right people being there at the right time and knowing how to do things, and so yeah, I'm I'm hugely aware of the of the one in ten right now. Uh, but it took a while to set in, honestly. Um, my dad had called me. On, I was My parents were out of town on Thanksgiving, and he called me just in the middle of the afternoon. I'm watching football and just said, hey, just mom and I are thinking about you, and we're just so glad you're still here. <laughs> and I just, it, yeah. really, it really hit me um, of how, how lucky I am at that moment. You know, speaking of football, uh, Dr. Pimentel, um, we recently saw a CPR save the life of Demar Hamlin. I mean, we all saw that. Everybody knows we were watching an NFL game when – he goes down. Was your phone blowing up with friends and family asking you your take on what was going on? Yeah, I think all of our phones were blowing up in the healthcare field. Dr. Chari, you know. too? Yeah, I think I actually didn't have the TV on at the time, and I started getting like a bunch of text right. messages and, Are you watching the game? And then, of course, we turned on the game as I'm trying to figure it out. All the Twitter feeds start going mm -hmm. off as to this has got to be this or that. And there were all these questions, you know, how long was the CPR? Did they have an AED? Which is, of course, the other important thing that when we talk right. about, you know, trying to save somebody's life and, you know, what's his problem diagnosis because he was down so long so um, you know it just goes to show I mean and he made you know as far as we can tell a very good recovery he's, from this. He's back watching the Super Bowl. He's, he's watching the Super Arizona Bowl right now. Yeah. You know I mean I, I think it just goes to show you how important it is yeah. to know CPR to be aware to be available and and like John says to even just try you right. know I mean it's too easy just to kind of keep driving or say well somebody else can take care of that I'll just call the police and just right. keep going you know and just so. to start those yep. chest compressions yep. or she took it she took it beyond chest compressions John you said one of the first things the you heard when you opened your eyes was a woman hovering over you saying I've been making out with you for two minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, great. I, when you come out from something you just have no idea what's going on anyway and then to hear that I was like what? <laughs> yeah, Whoa. I, it, it was really, there was a there was a funny story that Funny now, but um, my wife was out of town that night when, when, um, when all that happened right there on the street. But I had had Apple uh, AirPods in. They had fallen to the ground somewhere in the grass. The EMT had picked up my phone to call my, um, I think it was the EMT called to call my wife, just by putting the you know the phone on my eyes to get it. And then she was good lesson learned is make sure you're in your favorites in your phone that your <laughs> your spouse or your partner is number one on that list because that's just who right. they called. But I couldn't talk. Um, but halfway through that call, when she's giving this news out of the blue and she's out of town, it transferred over to the AirPods, where we're somewhere in the grass, and so she completely lost connection. Oh, gosh. And you talk, you're already freaking out, but then to lose connection during it, and it's happened to all of us where your AirPods go, you know, yeah. connect somewhere else when they're not on. For the moment, for that to happen, I think it just really scared her even more. But funny, funny now in retrospect, but technology, um, not always helpful. It can be our best friend or our worst enemy, depending <laughs> yeah. on how you know what's happening. We do have a QR code up on the screen right now. You'll see that QR code throughout the entire episode. If you scan it, it will link you to the American Heart Association with all the information on where you can get CPR certified through the American Heart Association. We're gonna keep this code up the entire program. Wanna to get to some questions and community questions from our viewers. Um, Ashley has one for John. Ashley wants to know, John, have you gone on a run since and have you taken that route since? <laughs> I have, I've been, I've, uh, as I told Dr. Tim Pimentel, I've been running great and then exercising. Um, yeah, I, I have and I have been on that route. It's a little surreal the first time you did. I told my wife I'm hitting the route. Funny thing was, in the weeks after, I was too scared to, to exercise, so I had a friend, um, family was out of town, so my friend from work would come over. It was a little surreal having my good friend from work sitting in the kitchen go, just listen to me on the treadmill. If you hear anything weird, come running down. Otherwise, just stay up right. here and do your email. <laughs> but no, I've been on the route, and it's all good. And I, I always wondered, do people on that route, I've always run that route, do they... Did they know I was gone from that route for a while? <laughs> Did they miss me? I don't know any people, but 
but if there's anybody who watches people running, they, they would go, oh, but there's that guy, he's running again. So cause I'm, yeah. I'm actually out there totally. You, yeah, that's uh, honestly, everyone on the media team here has said they're going to change their exercise route to that stretch of road. <laughs> if, if that's where all the doctors are, mm -hmm. happen to be driving by, and those two women who know CPR, I'm, I'm sticking with that route. Um, Leslie has a question for Dr. Pimentel. Um, what's the difference between, Leslie wants to know, cardiac arrest and a heart attack? So cardiac arrest is just a general term that we use when there's not enough blood flow to the head, which makes you pass out and conceivably die. Um, heart attack is a special type. Heart attack can lead to cardiac arrest, and typically a heart attack is when there's a blood vessel in the heart that's blocked or, or narrowed down and decreases blood flow to the heart muscle itself so it can't get blood to the head. So it's a type of, card it can lead to a type of cardiac arrest. Okay, a uh, question from one of our viewers, John Buckler. John wants to know, and Dr. Acharya, I'll ask you this. Should I be concerned if my left ventricle is only putting out 42% by doing an echocardio? I get dizzy a lot. So I would say yes because uh, the normal numbers that uh, the uh, American Society of Echocardiography uh, puts out for normal uh, uh, left ventricular ejection fraction, that's the number that uh, uh, it's being talked about, uh, it would be over 52%. So usually it's 55 to 65%. So if it's 40 uh, or 45%, we would say it's uh, reduced. And we would want to, would have to look into what's causing that. And there could be a lot of causes that could cause it. So yeah, definitely so would warrant a John should probably make an appointment right. to see a doctor soon, That's yes. a cardiologist soon. Um, Bobby has a question. This is a great question. We throw a lot of names and titles and terms around. Bobby wants to know, what's a fellow? Because you're, you're a cardi cardiology fellow, interventional cardiology fellow. So what's a fellow in, in the steps of your degrees and educations? And then what's the next step after you complete a fellowship? Sure, yeah. So uh, in the medical training, you do four years of uh, medical school. And after that, you do residency for three years. And uh, I trained in uh, internal medicine for my residency. And then you do three years extra training to specialize. And uh, so my specialty is cardiovascular disease. And uh, my training is a year after that. So that's uh, intervention cardiology training. So this is a subspecialty in the specialty? That's right. Of your, okay. And then, so you guys have a lot of, there's a lot of knowledge here is what we're saying. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a brain power right next to me. Um, Ron has a question for John, and that is, and you touched on this a little bit, John, how do you handle all the what ifs? Like what if you had ran on a treadmill that night, you said your whole family was out of town. Um, what if you'd taken another route? How do you mentally recover from something like this? Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a good question because I, I, I'm pretty optimistic here today and I can joke about some of it, but I've had some, some dark nights thinking about that, honestly. I try to keep that to myself a bit, but I uh, you know, wake up and kind of haunted by what could have been. And then, but I have to tell you, I have equal moments and more moments where it's um, grateful for what, and you know, and it, it put, put that in my mind and just think I'm grateful to be here, so what do I do with that? And, and just live my life even more full. Um, so when I say I have more energy, it's not just physically, it's, yeah, I think it's mentally too, honestly. And so that's been a good recovery. I'll share with you, we had um, more than you wanna know, but our, our the company that I'm in, we had our annual meeting yesterday. It was the first time it'd been in person in a long time. And we had 13,000 people around the world, um, you know, all in different locations, but a thousand, you know, right in front of me. And I was walking on stage, getting a little nervous. I got to do the opening address, really nervous. And I think this whole thing has passed me because I was walking up those stairs and just said to myself, man, you're here <laughs> and, and you're fine. And you've got this entire audience and people are looking to you, your family and company. And it honestly, I was, I didn't say this to anybody yesterday, but I walked up those stairs onto that stage. Um, the whole thing, the whole thing just behind all the, all the, how you get through it, it's done. I'm through it. <laughs> you know, and I walked up the mm -hmm. stage and it was great. Mm -hmm. So, um, good question. Um, That's awesome. You know, it's like a second chance, almost, is what I hear. Like, you're just going for yeah. it now. You're going to live your life. Going for it. <laughs> Doctor's going orders. It. Um, Sadie has a question for Dr. Pimentel. How common is atrial flutter, what John had? And is this something that any of us could have undetected until a cardiac arrest? I, first of all, I will say that a cardiac arrest due to atrial flutter is pretty rare. Um, so I don't want people to think, oh, I have atrial flutter, I'm going to die or anything like that. It, it's typically 
there were a lot of things that happened at the same time that I think set it up for a perfect storm, as, as we would say. Atrial flutter, um, and probably more commonly its uh, cousin rhythm, atrial fibrillation, okay. gets more frequent as you get older. So by the time you're 80, your, your chance of having one of those rhythms is about 10%. So, um, so it, while it's common, it's really more common in an older population. Um, so most people feel something, palpitations typically, shortness of breath. John tells you that he had this kind of nonspecific fatigue, right. um, which is a very, what's a very slight symptom, but most people feel something with it. And, and you just, uh, and John has answered Paul's question. Paul was wondering if you had any symptoms and you said you were just taking a run <clears throat> a few weeks ago, a few weeks before this, and you just felt really tired. That was it though. That's it. Yeah, yeah, like kind of, yeah, just a. That's honestly, it was it was four days before, and nothing and, you would call urgent care about. We've all no, felt I mean, really that's tired, very exercising. Non yeah, mm -hmm. um, Rex has no. a question for John. What does your follow up care look like? Do you have any restrictions after this? I have no restrictions. I think. I mean, I, other than awesome. you know, I'll continue to eat well and exercise, and but that. I think those were things I was doing anyway. I'm trying to do anyway. I don't eat so good all the time, but, um, yeah, I think the go live your life. And I don't take that for granted. I don't take it as I'm not cocky and I can do anything I, you know. Right. But I, I, I do, I'd say I do have a defibrillator um, that that we discussed and, and put in, and so I'll check. We'll check that. I think Dr. Pimentel mentioned we'll check that every year and make sure that's good. I hope I don't have to use it, but I'm I'm feeling great that it's in there. Um, but um, you, you could ask the doctors. I don't I don't think I have much of a, you know, stringent recovery plan other than just just living a you know good life and, and staying in good shape and. Staying conscious of things, but um, I think that's I think that's what I'm going to do. Dr. Pimentel, what's it like to have a patient that not only, you know, he credits the team here and along with the women who did CPR with saving him, but he's quoting you now. It's become a quote <laughs> in the family. That must be cool. Scary. But that's such an impact that you probably don't always know that you have on your patients. It's true. It's true. I met John probably at a very um, emotional time in his life, and, and you never you never think about the things you say. You just kind of say it and mm -hmm. move on. But it's good to know that 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 he and his family have hung on to those words and used it as a positive right. to continue moving on. So that's great. It's like part of his prescription. His mantra. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Marie wants to know. This is a great question. Marie wants to know. Have you found the women who did CPR? Have you ever been able to say thank you to them or figure out who they were? Uh, we have tried hard. I've gone door to door. I don't know who, I don't know. If I, if, if woman, blonde woman with dog, uh, anybody who fits that description, <laughs> I'm looking for you. you know, wait, you've gone door to door? Yeah. Like you've been knocking on doors asking for blonde we, we woman did. with We went dog? that street that you showed in the feature. My wife and I went door to door and they said, yeah, people would say, oh, I heard something happened last night. Uh, I don't, you know, the other night, but nope, nobody, uh, I can't find the, the, those that crew. I've even we're going on next door, you know, the the, the yeah. neighborhood app to try to put some word out, and still haven't found them. But <laughs> they were all there. Oh, I swear they were real. They were there. Okay, let's as, say as again. The, can tell you. the stretch of road that you were on. Say that again mm -hmm. for people who are watching. Maybe they can spread the word too, and we can find these the two CPR yeah. women. It's it's literally just the the quarter mile south of, of Shawnee Mission Parkway on Mission Road. So it happened on Mission Road, just that quarter mile little turn right there where it goes. Uh, and and you know, um, yeah, I, I haven't haven't found it yet. A lot of people know about it, but but I got to find the. You haven't the found the women yet. Yeah. Thank you. We'll, we'll put the word <laughs> out. Um, I have a question for Dr. Acharya. Was it weird for you to you, your your book in and your scrubs uh -huh. and look up and you see two other doctors also from the health system? Were you wondering like who called them? I mean, how did <laughs> did you? Was that weird? Yeah, it was weird because uh, I mean, you wouldn't expect so many doctors to show up. Right. The uh, first doctor when she came uh, running towards us and she introduced uh, herself as an anesthesiologist, right. cardiac anesthesiologist. And I was like, oh, really? So we have another physician here. Right. And then I see somebody else in scrubs also uh, in the crowd. I was like, okay. I and mean, they're all in the <laughs> cardiac team. That's at right. The health system. That's right. <laughs> so weird. What an incredible story. It's an amazing uh, story. It's mm -hmm. amazing. It's such a powerful message about the importance of knowing CPR. So I want to bring in all of our guests for some final thoughts now. And John, I'll start with you. What is the message that you want to say to your health care team, the women who saved your life, the public, any final message you'd like to get out there? Oh, uh, now hopefully you can tell from, and I, I both, both, both on stage personally, just how much it, it's meant to me. I'm so appreciative. Um, it's, it's beyond words. I won't even try to do that. I hope, I hope you both know that uh, from me and, and, uh, um, 
to, to the people that were there too that I can't find. Um, but I just as KU met overall, I would say just as an overall experience. And I, I um, Dr. Dr. Thomas and Katie Christensen were two people that were really involved as well. And um, these two both we'll both know those two. I would I want to extend my thanks to them as well because I think um, everybody. I think I mentioned this to Dr. Pimentel at, when we we had that last appointment that besides the, the medical care and the you know the expertise of it all that you that you that was clear um i think just the communication you know this is it consistent with everybody that interacted with me was a giving you confidence without lying to you <laughs> of course you're not a, 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 a um a balance of of science and explanation for for some things that didn't have a lot of explanation at the time mixed with humanity but not fake humanity to give me false hope um very clear answers very good just and now and I, i'm in an advertising agency i know it's communication and being simple and clear and in the absence of a lot of answers in those early hours uh, i always felt informed um, loved cared for all those things uh, so I'm, I'm really appreciative of not just the the medical nature of it but just the humanity and the and the clarity of it all uh, i don't take it for granted so thank you both and, and thank you everybody on your teams as well boy what a what a great compliment to the care he got dr acharya this was doubly weird for you. I mean, it's, it's like layers of an onion. There's so many layers. You came back to work that night and you're rounding. Then he winds up being one of your patients. That's right. So <laughs> after uh, he was uh, taken by the EMS to uh -huh. uh, the ER, I went home to have the dinner that I, I was, uh, planned to uh, have with my brother-in-law. You had a lot to talk about during the dinner. And uh, I got a page uh, with uh, uh, activation. We get uh, pages for uh, STEMI activation if somebody's having a heart attack or mm -hmm. if there's a suspicion that somebody's going to have uh, is having a heart attack. And I got that activation, so I uh, we are supposed to react to it immediately. So I rushed to the hospital, and I come to the emergency Thank department, you. and it's it's uh, John again, yeah. and he was awake enough to Thank ask me, oh, it's you again. <laughs> and um, I said, yeah, John, uh, you don't seem to get rid of me. <laughs> and yeah, we're here like again. This. <laughs> exactly. And at that time, we looked at the EK ECG, uh -huh. and uh, that Dr. Pimentel went over, and we realized that it's not a heart attack, and right. it was more God. atrial flutter. Yeah. So we canceled the activation, and then I w uh, got to go back home again. And what would be your <laughs> final thoughts for our viewers? So I think it was awesome that the two ladies who were there knew what to do and how to do it mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, added a lot to uh, how what the outcome was so I think it's very important for people to realize that when you see something do something rather than just watch and uh, also get uh, yourself trained in basic life support because yeah. you never know when that's going to be useful for you it, you've actually had to be called to an emergency before haven't you oh yeah yeah so it was it was a weird story I was on a transatlantic flight and You're uh, one of the doctors on the plane where they're like, right. is there exactly. a doctor on the plane? Exactly. Okay. So uh, I was a, a chief medical resident then, and I was traveling a transatlantic <laughs> flight. And I got a call about, is there a doctor on board? So uh, I realized that there was a, uh, somebody who had tried to get up from his seat and had huh. passed out. Okay. And that's why they wanted somebody to attend to him. And uh, he was uh, kind of awake by the time I reached him, but uh, uh, looked like uh, he had been sitting for too long, and he suddenly got up, and he passed out. So he got his legs up and uh, made sure that his brain gets the perfusion. And uh, his partner told me that he was diabetic, so we gave him some uh, drinks, and uh, he felt better after that. Can we call you before we exercise or get on a plane? Just make sure you're in the area, maybe on the same flight. Right. Get the lucky charm. Dr. Pimentel, what about you? Any final message you'd like to share with our viewers? Um, I just think that this is just a heartwarming story. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, Dr. Acharya and I, we, we work long hours. We see lots of super sick patients that struggle and, may, and ultimately many times don't make it. And it's just sad mm -hmm. um, and this is one of those stories where our patient did make it and yeah. he's not just surviving he's thriving as we all like to say these days and he's living so his life he's living his life yeah. and you know and there were so many things you know that went right and it I mean it sounds like John appreciates all that and yeah. you know and hopefully you know this will encourage all of our viewers out there to learn CPR and and save a life themselves so well, we do have one more segment for you. We love bringing you this next segment. It is called... Behind the Mask. 
You like that, right? Oh, I love it. Behind the mask. It's where we give our behind the scenes look at what our healthcare workers are like on a more personal level. So let's get to know Dr. Pimentel a bit better because mm -hmm. when she's not working on hearts mm -hmm. here at the health system, hey, you're filling your heart with some good old family time and it looks like you enjoy taking some fantastic trips with the, a beautiful cast of characters. Who are we looking at? That's my husband and my two girls. You know, that's our that's our COVID trip, the uh -huh. one that was canceled from 2020. Where was that? Where'd you in go? In London. Nice. So London and, and then Paris. And so we just love to travel. My whole family does. And I love to show them different cultures and things like that. So Beautiful. that's what we do in our off time. And how old are your girls? They are sadly 20 and 19, so no longer oh. in the nest. <laughs> you just gotta keep bringing them back with trips. <laughs> Every single minute I get, Throw them back. anything. <laughs> and now to Dr. Acharya, because you and your family, you're all about the outdoors, so let's take a look at some of your pictures and tell us about your family. Sure, yeah. there, oh my oh, gosh, yeah, wait a second. Big. I thought I was gonna see a hiking photo. <laughs> that looks like a, a picture that should be framed. Who are mm -hmm. these people? So yeah, that, uh, this picture, that's my wife. Uh, mm -hmm. That's my daughter. We are hiking up uh, to the Arches uh, National Park in Utah. And this is uh, me and my wife uh, in New York. So we were in New York for five years. This is my daughter when she was still young. Now she's already eight and she thinks she's a little grown up Aww. kid. That's us yeah. at the Lake of Ozarks. And mm -hmm. this is also uh, oh my gosh. in New York. Beautiful. Yeah, this is a hiking trip. Oh my gosh. So you know how, what a hiking trip is like Wait, that, as a parent. That, that's <laughs> a very big person hanging on to you on a hiking trip. <laughs> At some right. point, you, the kids got to realize they can't hang on to the back anymore, but they love that, right? <laughs> uh, those true. are great pictures. Thank you so much. Thank you to Dr. Acharya, and thank you, Dr. Pimentel. You're this was wonderful. John, huge thank you for sharing your story with everyone, and we are so glad that you are okay and living your life. And of course, thanks to all our viewers for being with us today and joining this conversation. Coming up next week on All Things Heart. I couldn't see, like it was kind of, it was all black and, and I didn't know what was going on. I was just kind of throwing myself around. Talk about scary and just as scary for his mom to witness. And then a discovery by none other than Dr. Pimentel here at the health system <laughs> that saved more than one life in his family. We've got you on a double header this yes. week. It's a Sorry, two for <laughs> it's a great it's a great story. Can't wait for you to see it. That's next Thursday morning at 10 a.m. We'll see you then.